Listen, I put a message out that I trust. Oh my God. Um, you know, sometimes I just go with what the Lord put in my spirit to talk about. I, I actually do that. But, you know, and I'm going to encourage you. Listen to this message. Listen to it to the end. Oh my God, it's coming to you straight from uh, nothing fancy. But listen to it. You will be blessed. And I trust that you will continue. So... So listen to this. There are days that we just got to praise the Almighty God in spite of all the hell that may break us. Now, are you aware that the enemy intention is to steal your joy? The enemy intention is to steal your joy. So, I do understand how you are feeling sometimes because yours truly sometimes feel the same way. But there is one thing I can assure you that I will not forget to do. And it's to give God the praise. It's to give God the glory. Now, let me set you up let me set you up so you could understand something there are two things going on probably simultaneously one of them is that the Lord is giving you his joy and the enemy want to give you his pain I'm just saying it as it came to me. The Lord want to give you his joy. The Lord's desire for you to have his joy. The joy of the Lord. We talk about these things all the time. The joy of the Lord. But I want to remind you also that the enemy intention is to give you headaches, pain, sorrow, misery, and confusion so what I want to set you up with the moment you are accepting the joy of the Lord you have the enemy disappointed the moment you are accepting the joy of the Lord the enemy is now disappointed now here is something I'm, I'm going to come at you. The moment you accept the, the, the disappointment and the burden and the sorrow and the put down and the, all these things, the minute you accept it from the enemy, you're now allowing the Lord to be disappointed. You, what I'm trying to say to you is that the joy... Your joy is in the Lord. Your pain, your sorrow, your misery. The enemy do not wish for you to be joyful unless you are already his. Let me make sure these words are clear. The enemy don't mind you are sorrowful. The enemy don't mind every minute. It's like a boxing you're in a boxing ring and the minute one person pound on you and go across the to tag or maybe I should say wrestling go across to tag his partner and you are about to get out the ring to get your partner tag he and fresh men come in and just pounding you again that's how the enemy operates so that's the enemy's plan is to keep pounding you and pounding you and pounding you until you said, what's the use in getting up? I'm going to be knocked down anyhow. What's the use? You'd be amazed how many people got knocked down and stay down. 
Now, maybe the Lord has loaned me some, the ability to motivate somebody. So I'm going to bring in one of my great motivating speaker. His name is Mr. Les Brown. And Mr. Les Brown said, if you could look up, you can get up. I'm borrowing this from Mr. Les Brown. If you could look up, you can if you could look up, you can get up. Now, even Mr. Les Brown, when he speak those words, he may not even speak in, as you know, well, first of all, most motivational speaker, literally, for them to make logical sense, they knew that they have to be grasping some material from the Bible. Irrelevant. Because you see, the Bible said, my strength is in the Lord. I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. David said in his word, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. David said he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. David said he leadeth me beside the still water. David said he restoreth my soul. David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they truly comfort me. So David, in his words, he didn't speak that there won't be downtime. He said, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You see, um, I believe there is a, a, a message where, you know, we are all, first and foremost, we are all in this earth together. And 90% of the time, in a particular area, if it's rain on you, it's going to rain on me. The only difference sometimes with the rain is that one man has an umbrella and one man do not has an, have an umbrella. The only difference, the only difference is the things that you have are, whether it's a physical thing as a protection. Physical. So I have an umbrella. Somebody wrote, he is my buckle and he's my shield. What I'm trying to say to you, storm will come. Each and every day, storm will come each and every hour. The only difference is whom I am anchored in the Lord. Sometimes people may say, what is he pretending to be? Who is he pretending to be? Why is he pretending? Yaddy, 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 yaddy. Folks, it's not that I don't have problems. But I do not look at my problem. I look at Jesus Christ. I don't look at my problems because I know if God brought me through that yesterday, he will bring me through it today. If I only trust him, the enemy comes, some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through his blood. The difference with a lot of people is that the enemy can beat them in the morning and the enemy Call them at lunchtime and beat them again. And then the enemy call them at dinner time and beat them. My strength is in the Lord. So the real true difference is your faith and your trust and your confidence. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. My friends, you are not the only one in the world that the enemy beat. You are not the only one that the enemy don't like. The enemy do not like the people of God. Let me say this clearly. The enemy do not like the people of God. So somebody may say to me right off the bat, well, hold on now. If the enemy doesn't like the people of God, Somebody may say, well, wait a minute, but I'm having trouble. 
and I'm not, and I do not, pers per um, I do not um, protest to be the people of God. Well, well, I want to set this up for you. I want to set this up that I'm, I'm going to use the terms bully, bully, bullying. You know, the way that the bullying work, if you have some big folks around you, bully doesn't necessarily pick on you. They wait until you are alone. Then they pick on you. Well, here is the truth. What is this boy trying to say? Well, first of all, if you are not walking in the will of the Lord, but you're going to say, but the Lord, but the enemy beat up on me, because you will know if you're walking in the will of the Lord. You know, you know if you are, you know if you're not. Well, I kind of want to say to you, well, one, it's not something to know and accept. Mm -hmm. It's not something to know you're not walking in the will of the Lord and accept it. It is something that you should know I'm not walking in the will of the Lord and I need to do something about it. Because here's the point I'm trying to make. I can give you all the remedies in the world. I could give you all the motivation in the world. I could give you all the philosophies. I could give you all the stories. But you know, not one of them will have any substance if I wasn't thinking about the mercies and the grace of the Almighty God. If I didn't, if I weren't speaking about the things about God, then I would be lying to you. Because I really do not know how to do anything without trusting God. I don't know. It's an early morning. The day is lighting, but I'm coming from my altar. I'm coming from the altar. Things don't go good, and I wonder how did it happen? I trust in the Lord. I trust in God. I trust in God. I trust in God. I believe that my children sometimes think, is daddy okay? Because he seems to not let certain things bother him. Or he would they, they would see me sometimes just go to my altar and everything was okay. But I just went to my altar and dropped to my knees at home and pray and pray or sometime I'll be driving certain places and I said son I gotta stop for a little bit they said daddy you going to your altar again that's my confidence my confidence is that I don't have any other ideas I don't have any other you know I don't have any other plans I don't know so I only can trust in the Lord. So I can't give you anything outside of the Lord. I can't tell you anything because if I told you, if I say anything to you outside of the Lord, I'm probably lying to you. Because I could say to you, you can make it. But I know if you say, Errol, could you explain how I can make it. Well, without me talking about the Lord, without me mentioning the Lord, I am lying. I am lying. Some people think I'm very successful based on what I do and how I do it and how I go about things. Some people think I'm nothing. They're both right. <laughs> <laughs> They're both right. To those who think I'm nothing, let it be so to them. And to those who think I'm successful, God bless you. But you see, I trust the Lord. Bills, bills comes. Financial situation comes. I say, God, you have always allowed me to make it. You know, these sound foolish, foolish to wise people. 
This sounds foolish. No, I told you over and over. And let me give you this as a joke. Let me give you this as a joke. As a joke, but it's truth for me. I'm going to give it to you as a joke, but it's truth. If you trust in the Lord, you need to speak life. If you trust in the Lord, you need to speak life. If you trust in the Lord, you need to speak life. God is life. God is life. Trust in the Lord, speak life. Speak. Don't speak down, speak up. So, I went to to meet with some folks and some of my priors are really stupid some of my priors are really really stupid hmm. I wish I could give it to some of them because it doesn't make sense but I remember that I said a couple of days ago I said Lord when that door opened the person who step out, let it be a financial breakthrough that comes my way. Let it be a financial blessing that comes when that door opens. And you know, this was just a silly, silly statement. And just to let you know, there is nowhere under the sun that this person should do what he did, but he entered my vehicle and then leave. And when I'm step, he's stepping out, he said, by the way, just before, just before I leave, for all the things you have done for us, I did nothing. For all the things that you have done for us, oh, let me give you this $100. One hundred dollar. It's better than ninety nine. It's also better than zero. Now, if I look back on that prayer that I prayed, it's weird. If I look back on that prayer, my good great God, Lord, let when that door opened, there's a financial great blessings that door that. is the opportunity or the possibility that this person will actually literally do such and say those powerful words not ago. you see so if I say anything to you if I can't speak the Lord I'm speaking lies Errol how do you get through your day oh well let me tell you that's a lie. That's not how I get through my day. I get through my day each and every day by trusting the Lord, by calling on him, by calling his name so many times for the day. That's how I get through my day. Errol, how do you, how do you do this? Oh, let me explain. Uh, well, first and foremost, what I actually do, and that's a lie. That is an absolute lie. That's not what I do. I trust the Lord. Errol, how do you get to those people? Oh, you know, well, first of all, that's a lie. That is a lie. How I got to those people is that I asked God to give me favor among men. Errol, how do you meet the kind of people that you're meeting and rub shoulder with? Well, you know what I actually literally, that's a lie. That is a lie. That's not what I do. I trust God and ask God, God, open that door for me. Give me favor in the presence of these people. 
People said, oh, Errol, oh my God, you know, you just seem to go through life as if everything is all peachy. How do you do that? Well, you know, let me explain. That's a lie. Because I would go to the altar and I said, God, you see and you know. God, you see how, how they, at times, God, they just come at me with every, every problem, God, you know. You may say, um, you know, Errol, we just notice, man, that, you know, you just look good and are, well, some of you may say that, you just look good and look happy all the time. How do you do that? Well, you know, I go to, that's a lie. That is an extremely lie. That's not what I do. I said, God, heal this body. Heal this mind. My God, heal. Guide my steps. Errol, you seem to make great decisions. How is it that you are able to make some of these wonderful decisions and people in business trust you? Well, you know, <laughs> let me explain this to you. That's a lie. That is a complete lie. No. Each and every day I beg God, God, please show me, teach me, guide me, direct me, open my mind. So I will understand what the dickens are these people talking about. So, if I were to give a word of advice and cannot say the Lord, I'm lying. I was working for this company some years ago. This is a funny thing now. And, um, <coughs> excuse me. Everything that they are doing is out of my league. Successful corporate executives, massive powerhouse talking, mega money and... I was terrible in math anyhow. I said, God, teach me to understand what these people are speaking. And teach me to understand how to communicate. You know, I had the privilege. <laughs> I had the privilege to do a couple of seminars for them. These are successful men and women. Successful. Extremely successful. And I have the privilege... I've been asked to do some seminars for them. You know, 90% of the time what I say to them, this is what the Bible say. This is what the Bible said. I did not know anything else to talk about. Am I lying? No. Am I lying? No. One thing I must bring to your attention Anyone you affiliate with, anyone you affiliate with, make sure that they know you trust God. Because it will come down to the brass tacks. It will come down to the brass tacks that even them will trust you because of who you trust. You hear me? Now, Honestly, I, I don't want to go overboard here. I got a lot of people who I know and who knows me who don't think I worth more than a, a, a more than a cent. They would not even ask me if they have a um, a, a a cow to go and get a, some grass because they just think I'm that stupid. They think I'm dumb I'm, and I'm stupid. What can I do about it? Nothing. Not trying to do anything about it either. But would you believe that I meet some of the most successful people in their presence? They're doing things with me. I'm doing things with them. 
in their present million years million years million years you name it so while the others are thinking he's nothing but as actually <laughs> look here look here if you do not trust God the enemy has an upper hand on you If you do not trust God, the enemy truly has an upper hand on you. But any moment you trust God, the enemy, second class. The enemy, second class. You know, I can't tell you how many times I go to pray. I cannot tell you how many times I go to pray. And in my prayers, I see the plotting of the enemy against me. I cannot tell you how many times I've gone and it, it whispered into my spirit what those who do not like me are doing, are trying to do, but just can't seem to get away with it. But not only that, but the Lord sometimes, I could see it so I can pray against it. I can pray against it. So if you do not trust God, you do not have your, well, first of all, maybe this might be wide open, but the spiritual eyes of God for you is closed. You're not talking to any brilliant person from book. You're talking to a man that God teaches the things that he need to know whenever he needs to know it. And you know, I mentioned earlier, I run with a lot of big successful, you, I don't want to rub this in so badly, but I run with some very important people. I'm not saying that everybody, but I think those who hear me understand me. You know, they don't think that I'm nothing. You know, they don't think at all. You know, they would ask me questions and by God's grace, I'm able to give them good information. By God's grace. By God's grace. So if I didn't have God's grace, if I didn't have God's mercy, if I didn't have God's guidance, if I didn't have God's direction, what would I say to them? I'll be trying to measure up and just can't. Just cannot. So I can't help it. I have to trust God. I can't help it. I have to believe in God. I can't help it. Many times I say to people, I'm very old school. I have to trust God. I don't know. I, look, look, look. I'm not saying men don't do things for you. But I trust God. That man will allow me favors. I trust God. There is not one person I do. Don't hide your identity from humanity. Don't hide your identity. If you're a believer of Christ, be a believer of Christ. I heard a story some years ago. And this was a preacher who said it. And the preacher told the story about a man selling, a, I think, either selling chicken, something like that. I think he's selling chicken, you know, in the country. Travel with chicken in the bag and go sell it. And he said, we go to the place or whatever in a, in a, in a something like a basket or whatever it is. But the story said that he showed up at this farmer's place at this place and leave the basket with the chicken in it and went to get the farmer and then he came and when they went to get the farmer the farmer had some tricky kids and they took the chicken out and then put must be maybe a cat or something in the, ba in the basket so when he came out and brought the farmer out, 
the farm he said this is a very nice chicken that I have to sell you and I believe you'd like this particular chicken live chicken not dead chicken live he said the farmer looked in the basket in the big basket that he would and of course took the lid on look and it was a cat or a dog something like that a puppy a dog so he looked at the man and said what the heck is this sorry for the word what is this you told me you got me a, a chicken to sell me and you're showing me a, a puppy farmer went back the, the man is confused walked back with the farmer and completely confused the kids and rushed back when he, in, in his back turn and put, in the, put the, the dog back and put the chicken back and take out the puppy the man went back and see confused and he looked in the basket and it is a chicken so the man was so happy confused but run to get the farmer came back and the chick, the kids and play the tricks again came back he looked in the basket and it is a puppy the man couldn't help it anymore he said no you look here whatever you are if you're a chicken be a chicken and if you're a puppy be a puppy if you're a believer be a believer and if you're not be a if you're not a believer make up your mind now i will encourage you to be a believer but you can't be changing guard changing uniform because if you keep changing uniform you're gonna forget and in the enemy's camp you're gonna have the wrong uniform on so just keep one on that you won't have to change it become a believer of christ i can't tell you anything today the only thing i can promise you is that i trust the lord now uh i kind of want to say i kind of want to say god's plan for man is far different from man's plan for man let me see if i can say it another way or this another way but meaning how men plan for you may not necessarily what God have in store for you. So sometimes, even though it looks good, men's plan, you got to say, God, let thy will be done. Let thy will be done. Let thy will be done. I'm really talking to somebody today because I do realize that one of the problem anywhere is people's faith faith i can't tell you how many times i'm out and people with different faith and different beliefs said can i talk to you can i ask you a couple of questions hmm, sure now why they want to ask me those questions is because they see or acknowledge that i have some kind of faith in the Lord you know there's an old saying you go to Rome you do like the Romans do no you don't have to do as the Romans do I this is a very big thing go to Rome you do like the Romans do no you don't have to do like the Romans do just about every friends that I know from high school know I'm a Christ believing person way back when when I didn't have any knowledge of today I'm trusting the Lord. Perfect? No. But I'm trusting the Lord. All my friends, high school, can confess that Trench was always this church boy. As a matter of fact, when I was small, back in the Caribbean, you heard me talk a lot about that. We ne did not necessarily Sunday morning get up and go to church like a lot of people, but we had church around us we understood because the family you know back in the island grandma grandma doesn't matter what you do monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday but sunday you can't make any noise in the yard and chris gospel music are playing up on the hills of hanover beautiful gospel music 
and you could hear the church bell ring and we couldn't do anything too crazy because it's Sunday but you know as a youth I would gather everybody together cousin everybody I would have church and I was the preacher I was the preacher back as in my little people growing up I was the preacher I remember some years later many years later I came to Canada and um, my my safe haven was going to church my safe haven as a young man going to church so I was known as the church boy going to church thank God I was a musician so I found favor going to church thank God he wasn't mama was a preacher he wasn't mama was a preacher and daddy was a teacher no going to church as a matter of fact, my mother will tell you if my mother and I in the same household and I would go to church, my mother would send me to church and I would come home and tell my mother word for word what the preacher said. That's how my mother started going to church. A little lad come home from church and tell my mother, tell her what the preacher said. Mm -hmm. My mother today is, wow, powerhouse in the Lord. But I'm just giving you a general idea. But what I'm trying to say, what the, the, word I'm the point I'm trying to get at is that, you know, these are weird, not weird story, but strange stories. Very strange. I remember that I would go to church and I would play music by myself sit in the piano playing forever sit in the drums I was a drummer playing forever I would do everything in church as a young lad thank goodness because I didn't know anything else I don't know I don't you know what I mean so I remember that I would go to church and I would play music I would do everything that the church would do. I'm the only one there. Well, maybe I shouldn't say that yet. But I would do all the things, have praise and worship, have things, have whatever, then pick up the offering and, and doing all these things. And But what I would do, I would also sometimes record these things. I would record the, the, my playing drums, you know, because as a drummer, I was practicing all the time and recording. So, for some reason, one day, I used to then started to make tapes. And then a friend of mine got one of my tape back then, just a tape. Because by now I started to do, you know, record some of the, um, the church service. Boy, did I really grow up in that church. And um, he got one of the tape that was not the church service it was one of my practice no I didn't know that it was one of them so he went he said to me Errol that was a very nice sermon that you preach very nice sermon so one of my eyes saw go like this like what is he talking about he said Errol but you're telling me that you pick up offering you did all of this you did all the music and then preach and throughout the whole service not one person say amen then I finally got it. He got one of the tape that I did while I was at the church by myself. I would have a full service by myself. Yep, by myself. People ask me, how did you sometimes, how did you get involved as a, not singing in your, well, first of all, I was always singing in high school and, and, and singing, you know, a lot. I was always singing. I, for those of you, I, you know, did very well in music. One June Achievement Award in Canada. Great recognition. Great, unbelievable recognition. We talk a lot about that when, you know, all of a sudden the, the calls are coming in to be in, you know, all kinds. But I recall, 
I really truly recall that by now I'm singing within my church, the church that I belongs to as a young man, singing in the church. And when other church has a, a concert or a crusade, crusade, my church got invitation. But at the time, it didn't seem like they had much interest in going and supporting. I hate to put it that way, but it seemed like they didn't have much interest in going to support others. I'm sorry to say. So I would go. I would just go. And then they would ask, who is here on behalf of this particular church? And I would get up and sing and represent my church. Un uninvited, un and whatever, just to take, uh, as I would say, shame out of my own small body, congregation, because I would go to represent my church, uninvited. Then after that, they stopped inviting the church at that time and start inviting me, because the Lord now started to do things with the, my ministry in singing. Look here. Sorry for rumbling on, folks. Trust God. Believe in God. No matter what men may say, trust the Lord. There are people who do not desire you to be anybody in life. Trust the Lord. There are people who want all the good for you. Trust the Lord. There are people who will give you things on a silver platter. Trust the Lord. There are people who will teeth off. Oh God, this is Jamaican talk. There are people who will teeth off everything that somebody have given to you. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. Minister Errol Trench. Trench Altar Ministry. A circumstances changer. Your circumstances can be changed. Listen, I am sorry if I say something that was out of order or something that was not in order. Look here, God gives me the opportunity to speak to people and encourage heart, encourage mind, and encourage. <clears throat> be blessed. Trust the Lord. No matter how anybody puts you down, God will lift you up. Doesn't matter what men say about you, God has said great things about you. Don't worry about what they're saying. Worry about what heaven is saying about you. Oh, don't make garbage. Don't worry about what they're saying. They set trap for you, for you to fall into holes. Pray that God will give you the idea where the trap holes are. You understand me why you must trust God? Because there are those who go out and they set trap because they want to see you down. But if you trust God and believe in God, God will show you where all the traps are so you can avoid it. And they now will become so miserable. Why is he still alive? Why is he still going on? Why is he still talking about this God? Why is he still... Trust God. Minister Errol Trench. Trench Altar Ministry is circumstances changer. God bless you. Be you in Christ. David was a shepherd boy. But God had in, in store for him to lead the children, lead Israel as their king. Not only that, but the Jesus Christ came out of the lineage of David. Jesse didn't see his son as a king. His brothers didn't see him as a king. They saw him stinky shepherd boy. God saw him as a king, one who is able to lead Israel, and one who is able to let the lion ridge of Jesus. God bless you. Minister Errol Trench, 
Trench Water Ministry is circumstances changer. Your circumstances can be changed. Speak with you. I hope you have been blessed. I hope God shared something with you from this message. Enjoy. God bless you.